Hello YouTube friends. I want to give everyone an update here. I replaced the coax cable. There it is. It goes underneath that clip. It goes into the chassis. Snakes on top of the the radio chassis and it goes into this antenna terminal block right here. And let me mention really quickly, I, I'm going to cover a lot in this video. I didn't use this cable. I was going to use this video cable and I found out that the center conductor was way too stiff and what it was was putting torque on the band switch because it was just too stiff so I couldn't use that cable so what I used instead was RG58 cable and I built up the outer diameter with heat shrink and I used the Ryobi heat gun which is a really indispensable tool to use and this has a curved uh, adapter that you could put on and it provides a reflective uh, heat to to melt to uh, shrink the heat shrink like you want it to shrink it really works really really good so what I wanted to mention also was that I measured the voltages and I had the radio powered up the variac at a hundred percent voltage on the variac and I took readings what I did was I made a chart like this and this chart um, shows uh, the cathode to ground screen screen grid to ground and the plates to ground and you can see where I cross out the numbers because I got kind of disgusted because as I was doing it I saw that these numbers were a little little lower than what I thought but not much instead of let's say for the plate voltage for the 6D6 RF tube instead of 242 volts it was like 221 and I thought well why could that why were they all low and I thought well gee maybe like the variac maybe a hundred percent wasn't really a hundred percent and that turned out to be the case because when I started doing the voltage checks again on um, with, with the radio plugged directly into the the, the uh, socket my voltages were coming out like about ten percent higher like here's I did the I did the readings again on here and instead of 101 volts for the screen grid voltage I was getting 108 and instead of 380 I'm sorry 376 volts for the 42 power tube I was getting 422 volts so that's like about 10 percent too high so right now I'm powering the radio through the variac again because what I'm thinking is this. I'm thinking that I have to add some more resistive load here for the power resistor. I have a 500 ohm resistor on there now, but I'm thinking it's going to need um, more, more resistance to have more of a voltage drop. And I do have a um, filter choke here, but I was reading yesterday that the inductive choke doesn't have as much of a voltage drop as as you would think you know you get more of a voltage drop with resistive loads so that's what I'm gonna to have to do add more to that to uh, get the B plus a little bit lower like maybe like 10% lower so anyhow I want to really fly through here this here is a, a new voltmeter I got because there was something wrong, I think, with the DC probe, the DC section of the probe I had on the VTVM, because I wasn't reading DC anymore with the VTVM. So I did a full alignment. I used this Heathkit um, single generator, and uh, it worked really well. I, I did all the bands according to the instructions right here for the service data. And also, you have a handy diagram from RCA, or John F. Ryder, 
that shows the transformers, how to make the oscillator, or where the oscillator, where the RF adjustments are in each transformer for each band. And that's really, really critical. you got to have one of these. So, anyway, I did all that, and I did the voltage readings, and let, let's, let's power it up. So, here we go. Oh, I wanted to mention real quick, on this, on this Heathkit oscillator, it goes up to, on one band, up to 1,100 kilocycles, and uh, part of the alignment instructions said you have to align the top end, the top end of the AM band at 1720 kilocycles, and uh, I had to use the AM station for for that one adjustment at 1690 kilocycles. And I used that to adjust the RF and the oscillator for the AM. So anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to power it up. And there's um, the plug here for the isolation transformer. So I'm going to plug that in. There's, this is the isolation transformer. And the variac is plugged into that. So I'm going to turn it on here at the switch. And I had to make this cable here. This cable, the radio is plugged into that cable because I wasn't getting a good contact with the socket anymore. This is worn out. So I soldered the wires right into the appropriate places where the variac is inside. And I just brought the wires out through the terminal holes. So it makes a lot better connection with this uh, this connector here. So anyway, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to ramp it up. And I tested this last night and so it should work today. I hope. It was working pretty good. After I, the adjustments for shortwave were way out of whack. I wanted to point out this has a clutch on it. You can pull the clutch out and it gives you, I think, a 60 to 1 ratio. Let me go back this way again. to say was this um, it works works really good on AM2 but I'm running out of video time 
but the audio is kind of distorted so I'm gonna to have to put a scope on it I'm gonna use the signal generator to put an audio wave into it and try to see what the wave does at different points and see if I can see where the distortion comes in so anyway that's it folks uh, have a great day bye